We're joined now by Idris Sandhu. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. You are the founder of Spatial Labs and Technologist. Really curious to get a little information about the project you're building on, which is the intersection of clothing, design, cryptocurrency, and blockchain. But welcome to the show. Peace, peace. Thanks for having me. <clears throat> it's so great to have you. Question. I want to start. Oh, you can go ahead, David. Oh. Go ahead. Well, you might have a better one than me, but I guess I'll go ahead. Um, so, Idris, uh, thanks for being here. And uh, what I know about your product is that you're you're primarily, or at least the the first thing you're selling people is, uh, you know, streetwear, fashion, uh, but it's got a chip embedded that has some blockchain features. So, I just want to know about this chip and and tell us about how you get real fashion onto the blockchain or what the interaction is there. For sure, for sure. Um, what we've realized generally at Spatial Labs is that majority of the conversations surrounding Web3 and the metaverse um, are happening from a digital interaction standpoint, right? So whether it's you holding a token and getting some form of digital asset, majority of the conversations are starting within sort of this digitalia space. Um, what we're actually aiming to do is giving more entry points for people that know nothing about the metaverse, know nothing about crypto, know nothing about blockchain to get involved while lessening sort of the education barrier, right? So by bridging the worlds of physical products through fashion, um, people can actually, you know, use our chip technology and using our embedded NFC algorithms, you can actually tap on the product, mint the actual digital twin that's attached with that product and receive a couple of different benefits. Now, this is great, right? Because it doesn't have to change consumer behavior, right? People don't have to go buy underlying token first from some you know, third-party app and then buy an NFT. Instead, they can still go to the store as they normally do, buy any physical item. But what changes is the consumer journey of what happens when you buy that product, right? When you buy that product, you can now activate it, mint it, and receive specific benefits um, curated by the brand. If I can um, jump in here with a follow-up question, one one of the really interesting things I address about the, the company seems to be your focus on supply chain, um, ethical manufacturing, the ability to track from, you know, origin to, to, to store to, you know, your, your, your feet or your, or your, your, your torso, you know, where this thing came from. I wonder um, whether you've seen appetite from big brands, from fast fashion brands. Um, like it, it seems like it's going to be a hard push to get this really out into the mainstream, as important as it is. But a lot of people do have an appetite to consume ethically. So I, I guess, what is the roadmap to getting these sorts of chips and this sort of awareness out to the mainstream um, beyond just like high fashion applications? Sure. That's a very great question, right? At scale, we see our technology powering millions and millions of chips. And the reason why this is important now more than ever is, you know, Within ethical sort of fashion practices and, and, and sneaker design practices, um, transparency hasn't really been one that's you know we've really focused on, right? So a lot of companies have been able to you know issue certain statements around certain products and sustainability scores that are actually not true. And we've also seen mm -hmm. sort of the ethics and practices that are actually making these shoes. Um, so a brand can release a statement, no way for the consumer that's actually actively participating in those sales to actually know if those metrics are true. Now this gives every the ability to not only have a decentralized way to track that, but also a distributed system of tracking that as well, right? Because our app is extremely small, extremely efficient. We've built this on the Polygon network. You can get information into a product in five seconds or less. The analogy that I like to bring um, or use to describe what we're doing is it's the Shazam of physical products, right? Prior to Shazam, if you went into a store and you heard a song that you'd like, you had to use three forms of queries to get what you wanted, approximately segmentation or fragmentation, right? Those are the ways that we query and search for information on the internet today. But Shazam allowed you to take a slice of an audio clip, analyze it, and get the exact information that is accurate around that particular track, as well as information you probably didn't know, like the songwriter, right? And other information. We're doing that, we're doing that for physical products now. Um, no longer do you have to like guess what item you have and what color it is and where it was made and trust Google, right? The manufacturer can actually provide fact-checked information into what materials it's made of, the royalties, the designers. And because of the way that our ecosystem works on the Polygon network, brands can actually tag individual designers and assign royalties to those physical products. Now, that's a game changer, right? Because, you know, with NFTs, they introduced this new mechanic of royalties. But 
it's kind of only been for digital products. What could it mean for a brand to be able to capture post-secondary sales of a physical item? So, and in, 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 you know, to 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 summarize the question you asked. Um, Although today we are launching products like this that have our link, you know, our chip technology into it, and it seems like more of a higher end fashion, our approach is very similar to like Tesla, right? Where we might have high demand, low scale, right? Or low supply, mid demand, mid supply. And our goal is to have high demand, high supply at an affordable cost for uh, brands that even fit out of the realm of luxury. Uh, want to get your thoughts on the intersection of cryptocurrency and design right now. From your purview, do you see a lot of people jumping into this bandwagon or is it really just like the beginner? You guys are like the pioneers of this space. Well, I think um, pioneers are, are incredibly important, um, but the sense of originality that kind of plagues our, our space today is everyone wants to be the first to say they did something rather than ones that do it right. And I think because of our attention to detail, our extreme, you know, design background um i mean it's like i when i was when i was a kid i was inspired by steve jobs and the work that jonathan ive i've did and even studying like eames and kata Travana and zaha i've always wanted to not only democratize but also distribute systems right and today we for, we kind of use those words interchangeably and so i mean for us it's not about doing it first which yes we are rightful pioneers in this space but our goal is to do it right and i think we're establishing a standard for brands to pretty much bring the products that they already own or will launch in the future to be metaverse ready or web three ready. I think that's our goal, right? Our goal is to be pretty much the same way Fisher Price would launch toys in the store and it would say batteries included. You don't have to buy batteries after that. That's our goal. Our goal is how can you buy a physical product and it's metaverse ready? You don't have to go buy a digital equivalent in two and a half years when the brand finally figures out that they want to be on the metaverse. It's like if brands could in ways you chip technologies like this to power their brands today, the consumer can still just buy this and just leave it on the shelf or wear it. And when they're ready to port this item over into the metaverse or Web3, they can. And what does porting look like in our ecosystem, right? Um, today, we kind of have platforms like Decentraland and Sandbox that allow you to buy pretty much 3D files or 3D assets and then use them in these interoperable experiences. But if I have this physical shoe, what could it look like for me to import this physical item into Decentraland or the Sandbox without having to make an additional purchase? That's our goal. It's not just decentralizing access, but it's providing a distributed system for everyone to get involved with the conversation. So at the heart, we're really solving three issues that I kind of wanted to touch on. One of those issues is currently brands have the lack of tools to fight, ag uh, to fight against counterfeiting and inauthentic products. Our technology allows for that in a very seamless, easy, distributed way. Right? Uh, most luxury brands today, if you were to take an item that you bought outside of their store back to them and say, hey, is this item real? They won't even touch the product because they're not even convictional in their ability to rely on human eye judgment to, to do that. Now, with our technology, you just tap on it in five seconds or less, you get the authentic meta ID of that particular item. The second huge issue, issue that's, and by the way, the, you know, the, inauthentic sort of counterfeiting market globally is $4.1 trillion, right, of fake goods. So the second issue that we're solving in terms of real world utility is there's a lack of post-secondary sales infrastructure for brands to capture post-secondary sales. So most brands only capture purchases once, right, when it's directly sold on their website. But if it's sold on a secondary market, right, um, like any of these reselling websites, the brand is not able to capture any of those post-secondary sales. Our technology allows the royalty mechanics to be built directly during the supply chain production of the item. So a brand can say, hey, we're charging $100 for our product, but there's a 2% royalty every single time it's, it's, it's sold somewhere else. Now, this helps small and mid-scale level brands as they continue to maintain and dominate their, re uh, their relevance, also capture some of those sales. And the third issue we're really solving is that there's a lack of incentives for consumers to hold on to products sold by brands post-sale due to limited utility. So literally the only reason why someone would hold on to an item over time is scarcity. That's it. But if a brand can now hmm. say, there's a new podcast, there's a new interview, there's a new song we've partnered with Dua Lipa to release via our products, there's an incentive for you to hold on to that product in the same way that people are incentivized to hold on to crypto because it accumulates over time.